It's March 3rd, 2002, Afghanistan. Two elite teams, Mako 30 and Mako 21, have a mission. Penetrate deep into the Shahikot Valley. Their destination? Gardaz, the heart of Afghanistan's Paksha province. Neil Roberts and his squad were tasked with a critical reconnaissance mission atop Takuragar. Their objective is to gather crucial intelligence. But as they approach, the unexpected happens. A snowy ridgeline becomes their battleground. This is the story of the Navy SEAL who got left behind enemy lines. Neil Roberts grew up with his 11 brothers and sisters in Woodland, California. After finishing high school in 1987, he followed in his dad's footsteps. He joined the Navy and began his military career. His first training was in Orlando, Florida, where he learned to be an aviation boatswain's mate. From 1988 to 1992, Roberts trained as an aviation electrician's mate in Millington, Tennessee. He was then sent to Guam. There, he worked as an aviation technician with the VQ-1 Fleet Air Reconnaissance Squadron 1. During this time, his squadron was crucial in operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm, playing a significant part in the Gulf War. Roberts worked hard with his fellow service members, playing a key role in the success of these important missions. After moving up to Petty Officer First Class, he followed his dream to become a Navy SEAL. His hard work and persistence paid off. He finished the training and became a member of Class 184, earning his Trident in October 1992. For the next six years, he was with SEAL Team 2 at their base in Little Creek, Virginia. This time was a major part of his military life. He worked with other SEALs, using his skills and knowledge in the team's operations and missions. In June 1999, he joined SEAL Team 6. In the early morning of March 4, 2002, the SEAL teams from DevGru set out on their mission. They got into two Chinook helicopters, Razor 3 and Razor 4. Expert Night Stalker pilots flew these choppers. As they carefully moved towards the challenging Shahikot Valley, knowing the area's dangers, they decided to send an AC-130 gunship ahead for a look. The gunship checked the area and found no signs of insurgents. This gave a moment of relief as the helicopters with the SEALs neared their landing spot. As the helicopter got ready to land, Roberts was at the back, ready for a quick move and to serve as a rear gunner if needed. When Razor 3 got close to the mountain, the pilots and the team inside saw fresh tracks in the snow, goat skins, and other signs that people had been there recently. The pilots and team immediately thought about calling off the mission, but it was already too late. All of a sudden, the Chinook was hit by a machine gun and RPG fire. The RPG hit the left side electrical panel, just missing the gas tank, and exploded inside the helicopter. This left everyone shocked and started a fire in the cockpit. Amid this crisis, a second RPG hit the right side radar pod, making things worse. The helicopter lost its electrical power, and its miniguns stopped working. With the sudden attack, the aircraft shook hard. This caused the hydraulic lines to break and spill fluid on the metal ramp, adding chaos. As the helicopter flew, a crew member saw, in disbelief, one of the SEALs falling out. He and another crew member tried hard to catch Roberts, but despite their efforts, they couldn't stop his fall. The aircraft's angle, the pull of gravity, and the heavy weight of his gear, an 80-pound pack and a 17-pound machine gun made it impossible to save him. Roberts was thrown out of the helicopter, falling 10 feet onto the dangerous mountain terrain full of enemy forces. He survived the fall and quickly stood up to defend himself. He turned on the IR strobe on his helmet and tried to call for help. Roberts was equipped with a pistol, several grenades, and an M249 machine gun. Razor III tried to go back for him, but the damage to the helicopter made it hard to fly properly, and they had to land urgently in the valley. Despite probably being badly hurt from the fall, Roberts was prepared to fight. When the insurgents found out he was alive, a large group started to surround him. 
He fought them off for a while, using up all his machine gun bullets and grenades. Only after he ran out of ammo did the remaining insurgents get closer. Later, Neil Roberts's body was found with a bullet wound in his head. The exact details of what happened to Roberts are still not clear. We don't know if he died right away or was captured and then killed. There's a chance that after being shot in the right leg, he was captured by the insurgents. Razor 4, not knowing what had happened to Roberts, went back to the mountaintop. Master Sergeant John Chapman, a combat controller, and a few SEALs offered to rescue Roberts. They knew the enemy had a lot of people there. As they got off the Chinook, they were immediately shot at with machine guns from three different sides. The team quickly evaluated their situation and moved to higher ground. Chapman led them, not hesitating even for a moment. In deep snow, he reached the top of the hill and faced an enemy bunker. Chapman and another SEAL took out two insurgents and gained control of the bunker despite another fortified enemy position nearby. Chapman was shot twice in the torso and lost consciousness. The rest of the rescue team was caught in a lethal crossfire. Two of their members were seriously hurt, and one was believed to be dead. They were clearly outnumbered and outgunned. The SEALs made the tough decision to pull back. Returning off the mountain peak towards the northeast, they took down two more insurgents. One of the injured SEALs led the way as they moved part way down the mountainside, seeking cover. Initially, Chapman was thought to have been killed before his team left the peak. But he regained consciousness after a few minutes and kept fighting the enemy alone, despite being injured twice in his torso. Sergeant Chapman bravely faced a large group of insurgents. Drone footage showed the incredible scene of Chapman taking out at least two insurgents, including one in hand-to-hand -hand combat, before being hit by gunfire. He is recognized for saving the entire rescue team's lives. After the fierce fight, soldiers who arrived quickly reported seeing enemy fighters with Robert's gear and finding a helmet with a clear bullet hole. Roberts held on for almost an hour, causing major losses to the enemy with his pistol and grenades before he died. Although Takurgar was eventually captured, seven U.S. soldiers lost their lives and 12 were injured in the battle. About 200 enemy fighters were also taken out. The Battle of Takurgar shows the incredible courage and unbreakable spirit of soldiers like Neil Roberts and John Chapman. Their selfless acts and sacrifice against overwhelming odds are a reminder of the extraordinary bravery of those who risk their lives for others.